What's up, wrestling fans? Richard Woodrow here. Welcome to a brand new edition of Kayfabe Kickout Audio for June 25th, 2013 for kayfabekickout.com, putting the pro back in pro wrestling. On tonight's show, I have two very special guests. Uh, my first guest, uh, this is her second appearance uh, on Kayfabe Kickout Audio and her third appearance uh, on the site. Uh, member of the iconic uh, Hart family of professional wrestling, uh, Julie Hart. Julie, uh, how's it going? And my second guest is her first time here on Kayfabe Kickout Audio, but the second time on the site, uh, daughter of the legendary uh, Dynamite Kid, uh, the Dynamite Doll, Bronwyn Billington. Bronwyn, how's it going? It's going great. Thanks for having me, Richard. Ah, you're welcome. So uh, how, are, uh, how are things going up in Alberta? Uh, we're slowly drying out. That's good. Yeah, it's getting better. It's a sunny day today, so that's good. Good, good. That's good to hear. And, you know, I've been keeping uh, close tabs of uh, what's going on up there on the news and uh, just, you know, just craziness. Because I remember <clears throat> when I was in the military in 1997, we had to go to Manitoba for the flood. And it was like we were, you know, flying over, you know, more rural parts of, of Manitoba. And like it was all, you know, all I could see out the, you know, out the plane window was, you know, the top of the tops of roofs and, and you know, cars were totally submerged. It was just unbelievable. And, uh, you know, I see, you know, I saw on the news, like, military personnel loading sandbags, and I was just thinking to myself, you know, been there, done that, so. Yeah, yeah it's been a crazy couple of days, for sure. That's good. Was there any, like, major major damage to your guys' homes or anything, or? Oh, no. Okay. Not, not where we live. Oh, yeah, you guys are, yeah, yeah, you guys are right in, right in the, you know, the, the center of Calgary, right? No, we're up on a hill. Like maybe uh, fifteen kilometers, no, not fifteen, ten or so. Okay. From the river. Okay, yeah. that's good. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's good. So well, that's good. That's uh, good to hear. You guys are you guys are okay, and that uh, you know it's slowly drying up up there. I just I never thought you know in a million years like a place like Alberta would have floods, but you know I guess you know. Well, living so close to the mountains too, right? Yeah, that's true. That's uh that's a good point. Yeah. So and Calgary is built upon a floodplain. My sister told me that. Okay. <laughs> well, that would <laughs> that would be why the, that would be why uh, you know, they they'd be uh, susceptible to floods then, I guess. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't think they expected it to be this bad though. No, it was like I said, you know, watching the news, it was unbelievable like the, the amount of water that was you know, that was flooding like a lot of parts of Alberta and you know, I got a lot of a lot of my buddies are working up in Alberta and, you know, like in Fort, uh, Fort McMurray and Fort Saskatchewan and things like that. And, you know, people had to, had to be evacuated and whatnot. So it's pretty, pretty crazy up there. Uh, yeah. And so, okay. So we'll start with, um, we'll start with Bronwyn. So for, uh, some wrestling fans who may not have read, uh, your, uh, interview on the site, uh, from a few months back. Uh, can you just give us a rundown of what you're doing in uh, professional wrestling right now? Sure. Um, I'm involved with a few companies here in Calgary. I'm a valet to my fiancé, Dynamite Dan. So my first show was back in January and been going pretty strong ever since. I think I'm on my 15th show now. Wow. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having lots of fun with it. That's good. That's good. Yeah, so um, you got... Another show coming up uh, for RCW in a few weeks? Um, we were supposed to have one last weekend, and um, it got canceled due to the floods, actually. So Right. Uh, the next one has been rescheduled for July 20th, and my cousin Harry Smith will be coming for that show, so that's going to be great. Oh, excellent. Yeah, no, it'd be, uh, I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure Harry will be uh, looking forward to getting back to Alberta and getting back to uh, you know, his wrestling roots. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. So the main reason why we got you here on the show, Bron, is to talk about um, your father's uh, DVD, uh, which is available through highspots.com. It's called Dynamite Kid, A Matter of Pride. So how did you get to be on the DVD? Did High Spots call you or did you contact them? Or um, I believe they had originally... They interviewed my dad first, and then I received an email after that, um, or a phone call. I can't quite remember. It was 
a ways ago now, but uh, yeah, they had contacted me to do the interview. Okay. Yeah, no, um, I just uh, watched a DVD a couple months ago, and I, you know, I thought it was a, I thought it was a absolutely great DVD, you know, from start to finish. Um, were there, you know, were there anything? Was there anything in the DVD that, you know, you weren't impressed with? Like, what did you think? What did you think of the DVD overall? I really liked it overall. Um, it wasn't as I was expecting to just be crying my eyes out and. Uh, of course, it's a little bit emotional for me, but I was more happy with the end result than upset, like I thought I would be. But uh, it was very enjoyable to watch, hearing all the, the the legend wrestlers talk about my dad and the old days. Yeah, no, for sure. It was, uh, you know, like I said, uh, just a, a great DVD, you know, from start to finish. Uh, Julie, have you, uh, you seen the DVD yet? Oh, of course. <laughs> I thought it was brilliant, you know. I mean, Dynamite is my favorite wrestler, so awesome. it was really nice uh, seeing, like Rowan said, everyone talking so well about him, and you know, in the ring and out of the ring as well. Um, you know, Tom will be, will always be the best there is, best was, best there ever will be. <laughs> Didn't the Hitman say that? Yeah, no, Brett. Uh, yeah, yeah, Brett. Yeah. Did. Yeah, Brett did say that, you know, in his uh, in his book that, uh, you know, people referred to Brett as, you know, and he referred to himself as the best there is, best there was, but he, he referred to Dynamite, you know, he said that, uh, you know, Dynamite was the greatest wrestler he ever, you know, he ever stepped in the ring with, so. Well, and Stu adored Tom, too. So, you know, Stu saw that potential in Tom, like, way before anyone else did. You know, he knew he was a good worker. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, in the interview that we have on the site, uh, Brom, when you had commented that uh, you hadn't seen your father in, in 15 years, it was a very emotional time. And there are some, there have been some people in the, the professional wrestling business that have commented on on several occasions about uh, Tom's living conditions over in England. Uh, that people were saying that, you know, he was destitute. He was living in the, you know, the, the, you know, the, 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 the slum part of England. He was living in a, you know, a really run down place. Like is, you know, you we, uh, recently went over there. Like, is that, is that the case? No, not at all. And, um, of course that's what I had heard before I had reconnected with him. Right. So I was a little bit afraid when I went over there to, to see what I would see. But when I went, I was presently surprised that it was, you know, a lot better than people had made it out to be. You know, he, he's just got a one-bedroom place. He's a single guy. I mean, he has a wife, but they, they live separately. Okay. Um, he has one bedroom, one bathroom, you know, just a living room, a kitchen. What else does he need, really? No, that's true. So, so you said yeah, that, I mean, so you said that he's, like, he has a wife, but they, they live in separate, separate, uh, uh, houses? Yes, they do. But oh. she takes very good care of him. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Now there was there was something in, in in the DVD I noticed. I'm not sure if you guys noticed this as well as well, but uh, in the Q and A section, I found that uh, Tom was kind of short with a lot of the questions. That he, I don't know to me if it seemed that he was like closed off or he didn't. He seemed like he didn't want to answer a lot of the questions. Like Brian, when when you went over there, like was he, you know, was he like that, um, talking to you or talking with the guys from High Spots, or was it just? Um, he is sort of just like that i think it's part of the the british you know the way they they were brought up right it's a little bit different than how we were brought up as canadians but um when i brought my fiance over to meet my dad it was my second or third visit he really got him opening up because he he knows how to talk to him about wrestling and get him going and get the memories flowing and so they had a really great time and i just sat back and watched and listened to them Right. Well, that's good. No, it's good to hear that. Uh, it's good to hear that your father's, father's doing well because, you know, like I said, I've read so many things that people have said and and uh, I've heard interviews with a lot of, you know, wrestlers and people in the business and they, they and apparently that, you know, guys from the WWF way back in the 90s, like they went over to England several times and they tried to get in touch with, with Tom, but Tom wasn't very receptive and he wouldn't, he wouldn't go meet the guys. He wouldn't like call, you know, he wouldn't call back or nothing. So, um, but it's, you know, it's, it's good to hear that he's doing, uh, he's doing well. So. Yeah, absolutely. 
So what, what like, I guess um, this question is for Bronwyn, but Julie, uh, you can, you know, this is for both of you, actually. Like, do you think that Tom will ever get into the uh, the WWE Hall of Fame? Oh, God, yeah. So. If, yeah, and if they didn't, jeez. Yeah, it would just be silly to not have him. Yeah. Do you think he'll go in as a uh, do you think he'll go in as a singles wrestler or do you think he'll go in with as maybe a combination with Davy Boy as you know part of the British Bulldogs? What we what, what would you think will be better? Uh, separately. Separately? I could see well, both could... happening. Well, I think okay, sorry Bron, you can go ahead. Oh no, I was just saying either or, you know, the the, the Bulldog phenomenal tag team, so I'm sure that'll happen as well. Yeah. I, for me, I would like to see separately because they both accomplished great, great things in a singles career. But, you know, as a tag team as well. But uh, I think uh, it would kind of be like, I don't know. I would prefer, if it was me, to see them. Tom going up there and getting his due, you know? Mm-hmm. And then Dave, of course, you know? Yeah, that's 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 a tough one. I mean, they're they're both, you know, fantastic singles competitors. Uh, but yeah. but I, I, you know, I have this feeling that if, that when, not not if, but when they get inducted into the, the Hall of Fame, they'll, you know, I'm thinking that they'll probably be inducted as the British Bulldogs. Maybe not. It's hard to say. Yeah. Well, it'd be kind of cool, too, because you'd bring the families together, right? Both families, Billington's and Smith family, together, and that would be just as cool. Absolutely. I mean, that would be that would be really, uh, really phenomenal. The you know to see the, the you know the, the hearts on the Billingtons like uh, you know back together once again. What I would love now, I'm not even sure this is going to happen for next year's Hall of Fame, but you know, uh, I'm not sure if you guys have heard that uh, Percy Pringle, Paul Bearer, is the has been confirmed as the first inductee into the Hall of Fame. Like I would love to see Owen and you know the British Bulldogs. I don't, I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but yeah, yeah, you know, I don't even know how all that stuff is. Uh how they decide that, who goes in and when they go in. Like. Yeah, I mean, I think I think for the most part, it's, you know, I think, I don't, I don't know, I really don't know how they do it either, to be honest. I think basically it's, basically, uh, you know, from what I've been told and from what I hear is, you know, if Vince knows who you are and if Vince likes you, then you're in. And oh. <laughs> I don't know, I I. You know, it's it's not like an actual sports hall of fame where there's a selection process and there's voting or anything like that. I think, you know, I think if uh, you know, I think it, what it boils down to is as long as you know Vince likes you and knows who you were in professional wrestling, and uh, if you made a you know significant contribution in pro wrestling, like you know more so the WWE, then I think you're in. You know, wasn't uh, Ric Flair? Uh, wasn't he in twice? Four Horsemen or something. Yep, he was in. Uh, he was in as a singles yeah. competitor, and he was uh, inducted in 2012 uh, as part of the Four Horsemen. Yeah, so he's the first, the first, yeah, yeah the first WWE wrestler to be inducted twice. So, okay, yeah, so it is possible. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like they, you know, they obviously. That's just weird how they do it. I don't know if it's a polling system or not, or like you said, you know. Um, <laughs> I don't know about that. That sounds like a conspiracy. Uh, yeah, it's 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 basically like yeah. I mean, I don't think there's any sort of like actual system to it. I think Vince and you know the other the other higher ups in the company. I think as long you know they they just say basically yay or nay whether or not you know a certain individual you know goes in the Hall of Fame. So and. I, th- I think a lot of other factors like come into play too, like depending because they, you know, their Hall of Fame, they want to get, you know, good ratings and they want like, you know, maximum attendance. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't think there's any sort of actual method to it. You know, I could be wrong, but. 
but I think that um, I think that you know Tom not being inducted yet. I think it's it's uh, you know it's long overdue. I think. The question is, who gets to get up there and induct him? Mm. That is a good question. What do you What do you think, Bronwyn? Like, who should? Bronwyn should. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I'm hoping it'll be me for sure, and I definitely yeah. would do it. So. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. that would. I mean, that I would mean make my siblings as well. If yeah. They get up with me as well. Yeah, American Maris, like the three of you. That would be pretty cool. That yeah. would make the that would make the most sense, but I'm not sure if the WWE would do would do that because. <laughs> Are they going to ask the hitman? <laughs> well, that's I mean, that's that that could be another possibility if they for whatever reason they decided not to to get you know Bronwyn uh, to induct him. It would most likely be Brett because you know Brett and Tom have a history in the ring, so. Uh, we, I guess we'll, just well, have, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like I, you know, I mean, I, I hope it happens. You know, I hope I hope it happens soon because, like I said, it's it's long overdue that you know Tom, Davey, and Owen, you know, like they all should have been in the Hall of Fame a long time ago. But I mean, you know, you guys know as well as I do, you know, the amount of politics that are in the WWE. So, mm. so what was it like? <laughs> so Brahm, so Brahma, what was it like uh, being interviewed by uh, by High Spots for the documentary? You said you said before it was very emotional. Um, it was a really good experience. It's the first time I've ever done anything like that, even on camera for anything. And uh, the men were really, really nice, great guys, really professional. And um, of course, it was a little bit emotional for me. I was probably holding back tears the whole time, but I got through it, and I did a very good job. And I'm proud of the job that I did. So, yeah, no, I mean, you know, you did a you did a great job, and. You know, you very you kept your, you know, you kept your composure, and I mean, you know, like you said, I'm I'm sure it was very very emotional for you, but I mean, I mean it's understandable, you know. I mean, like you said, you hadn't seen your father in quite some time, you know, 15 years, and you know, for you to talk about, you know, your father, your father's career in pro wrestling, and you know, uh, you know, I can imagine it must have been, you know, very, you know, very emotional for you. Yeah, it was. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, so let's switch switch gears here. Now, Julie, the reason why you're on the show is to talk about your new book, which is out finally. Yes, it's here. <laughs> that it is, and um, which, uh, for those of you that have may not have heard, and you've been living under a rock the past six or eight months, uh, Julie, Julie has a new book. It's called Heartstrings, My Life with Brett and the Heart Family, which uh, can be purchased through tightropebooks.com. And so this book really is, you know, it's a, it's a pull no, pull no punches kind of book, isn't it? Yes, sir. It is. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I, I think that a lot of people think that it was, it's a lot of wrestling stories and things like that, but it's not, it's, uh, it's about my life my childhood, my teenage years, and then Brett and I marrying and the ending of that. And, you know, just a few little things in between. But, um, yes, it's finally out and I'm relieved. You know? I can, yeah, I can imagine, I can imagine you, uh, you'd be relieved because the last time you were on the show, you had contacted, uh, you or you had commented that it's, it was several years before, you know, when you decided that you wanted to, to write a book and now that it's finally out. Well, it was off and on. It was picking it up and putting it down and picking it up and, you know, changing things and then not wanting to do it at all and then, you know, finally doing it. So I'd say I've been saying that there was a book for probably 10 to 11 years. So this was yeah. like, so this was like, this is a very, you know, long journey for you then to get from, you know, to get from start to finish. And, and, uh, there are like, how have, have you received, uh, uh, many, well, have you received much, uh, like much feedback from the book? Like, uh, have fans, you know, have fans oh, commented yeah. to you? Oh yeah. And the majority of them are women so far. 
Oh, really? Um, okay. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing some of the things that I've been getting from women. But um, there was this lovely fellow at uh, my chapter signing that uh, he was kind of hanging around the table when I first got there, and then he kind of walked up and he's like, "Are you?" He goes, "Are you starting?" And I'm like, "Oh, well, it doesn't matter." And he goes, "I read your book and I." I just want to hug you. <laughs> I'm like, well, come over here and give me a hug, you know. But uh, I'd said to my in my head after he walked away, I thought, you know what? If nobody shows up, that one guy made a difference for me writing that book. It was a whole. It, it just it really touched me because you know he had to be about forty years old, and he had said that uh, the book. When he read it, his life was very similar to mine, you know, and that must have taken a lot for him to come up to say that to me, you know. I was very touched by that. Nice. That's, that's you know, it's, re it's really nice when, you know, fans, you know, they can express, you know, or whether they've read a book or watched a documentary about a specific wrestler or a personality in the business. And, you know, it's really nice when they can go up to that, to that wrestler or personality and, you know, express their feelings on you know, and, you know, how they, you know, how they enjoyed, you know, you know, enjoyed it. So, uh, it was coming, it wasn't coming from some fan. He was coming from someone that had experienced my life. Right. Right. So I didn't feel like he was, oh my God, Julie Hart. He came up to me like Julie. You right. know, we connected. So I mean that made me feel good because he didn't he didn't even talk about anything he talked to me and what it the things that I had talked about and how touched he was and it made him sad it made him happy and you know and he cried and I'm like you know what forty year old man says that he cried wow <laughs> you know yeah you know I'm a fairly built guy and confident and. Whatever and, you know, I kind of think that uh, it must have been like that for Flurry, for you know men to come up to him and sort of say the same same things that you know he wrote that book for a reason, and that was to help others, which is what this book is. The, the idea was on, you know, right? You know, it's not a tell-all and it's not a bashing of anybody. It's it's uh, a story of my life and the experiences that I had. And maybe, you know, to share those experiences with others. Right. Can relate to me and then do something about it, you know? That was going to be my next question, actually. If, uh, if this book is like, was a, because some, you know, some. You know, wrestling fans and marks or whatever you want to call them, like they, you know, they've commented that book that your book is basically just a a rebuttal to Brett's book. You know, my life in the cartoon world of wrestling. That you just wrote this book just to to kind of get back at Brett. So that that's obviously not the case, is it? Oh good God! Then did I? Would... <laughs> that's you know what everyone's entitled to their opinion, but I think if you when you read it, there that's not in there. And if it's just people looking for a reason to create controversy or gossip or whatever it is, it's not written like that at all. You know, if you remove Brad, if you remove the hitman, you'll read it like it's a, a, a story bubble, like a humanized Brad, I think. Right. You know, like I, I'm not... I wasn't married to the hitman. I was married to Brett. Right. You know, long before he became the hitman. So it's a story about two, a couple. It's not about bashing them. And, you know, and whatever. Like, if people want to talk about it like that, then that's up to them. That's their opinion. But, um, yeah, I'm, I, I've been hearing the same thing, but it's... It's uh, because you're reading it the wrong way. You know, you're defending something that doesn't need to be defended. 
you know, uh, do I need to mention? <laughs> but, so, yeah. No, for sure. So, so yeah. I mean, it starts with anyone that writes a book, anyone in the public eye, right? No, it's absolutely. Like, oh, my God. You know, like, no, it wasn't written like that. I didn't, you know, I promised my kids I wouldn't do that. Well, I mean, that's, yeah, no, I mean, exactly. I mean, you know, honestly, what would be the point of writing a book like that, a tell-all or a book to try and try and discredit Brett? I mean, you two, I mean, obviously you two are not the, you know, you guys aren't the best of friends, obviously, but you're, you're definitely civil and, you know, that's, I mean, there's no need to, to drag each other's name through the mud, so. Well, have you read it, Richard? Uh, Brett's book? No, my book. Uh, I can honestly say, I'm sorry to say this, but I haven't read it yet. Okay. Well, someday when you read it, you know, just, yeah, give me a little review on it or whatever. But I think that, uh, my, when I wrote it, it was, it was, what can I do with this story? You know, like after it comes out, like how... What am I going to, like, what, what was the point of writing it? Well, the point of writing it was to share my stories, my tragedies, my sad little life with other sad lives. Right. That I can help somebody, you know? Um, the woman that is stuck in that uh, loveless marriage or abusive. And don't get me wrong, Brett and I... This is one of the things I want to clear up. Brett was not an abusive man. We had a fight. <laughs> Couples fight. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You know. You know, uh, Brett and I fought in public, or not public? Whoa, private. <clears throat> Away from our kids. Our kids never, never saw us fighting except the one time. And even then, in the story. Like, Brett told me to get out of the car. I got out of the car. He took me away from the kids, you know, and then that's when we got into it, you know. It was just like that. That's all that it was, it, you know. Uh, it's unfortunate that, you know, our son witnessed that, but it was the only time he ever did, you know. And uh, I just don't want people to get the wrong idea that he was, you know, because, you know, I, <laughs> if the hitman wanted to kick my ass that day, I think he could have, mm -hmm. you know. But I also, I fought back. And that's just part of who I am, too. Right. And it got to that point where I was really, I'm not excusing him and I'm not you know, defending. I'm just talking about it as a woman and the kind of person that I am. You know, that I, my whole life I've been like that. You know, I, I'm quite uh, spry, feisty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wouldn't go down without a fight. And I think in the book it talks about that my whole life. I always got back up again. You know, every time someone did try to take me down, I would get back up again. And Brett was no different, you know. Wow. But like I say, if he really wanted to do some damage, he could have, and he didn't. You know, it was like a domestic kind of squabble. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. all you know, all, all couples have arguments. Any couple that, you know, any couple that says that they've never had an argument before, whether they're married or common law or whatever the hell you want to call it, they're they're bullshitting. I'm sure, you know, Absolutely. yeah, I'm sure Bronwyn has and her, you know, and your fiance. I'm sure you guys have fought on numerous occasions. Oh no, we don't fight. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> I mean, like you, you guys see each other. You know, it's like Homer Simpson says. You know, it's like I'm going to see you all day at work because you guys work together. You know, uh, you know, in, in the professional wrestling business. And then you guys, you know, obviously live together and you're going to see you all night at home. So obviously, like, you know, couples fight 
But yeah, um, absolutely, it's normal. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it totally is. You know, like I said, any couple that says that they they've never argued before, they're just full of shit. Bottom line. And um, but yeah, no. Um, so Julie, like your your book talks about you know it talks about your childhood as well. You know, growing up uh, in Saskatchewan. I, uh, I do, I, I get quite into it, and I think that's probably the majority of emails that I'm getting from people, that has touched them the most. Um, like, you know, oh my God, what a sad, sad time in your life, and having to go through that, and, you know, um. I think uh, it was really important for me to talk about those things. You know, I mean, that, that stuff is still around today. It's just that we have better resources now. You know, kids matter first now. You know, no matter what it is, like even bullying. Back then in the 60s when I was a kid, nothing like that. You know, we didn't have the resources that we do today. Mm-hmm. You know, now we have people talking about sexual abuse, and, you know, domestic violence, and, uh, you know, beating kids, and, you know, everyone's staying quiet about it. Right, yeah. But that doesn't happen today anymore because people like me or, you know, even Flurry and what happened to him and, like, those are the real heroes. Like, if you asked me, well, who's your hero? I'd have to say Flurry. Like, for coming out and saying the things that he did and the positive that he's taken by writing such personal, heartbreaking things that happened to him as a kid. And look at the difference he's making today. I mean, I think that's why we write these things when we write a memoir or a biography, whichever, it's to make a difference. It's not about slamming anyone. Okay, well, some people do, mm-hmm. you know, and they're, they're angry and upset and, you know, but write it about making a positive change for things, which is what, you know, I'd like to think that I've done, obviously, by the emails I'm getting, you know, speak up for kids Absolutely. You know, um, bring awareness to things that are going on in our world. And there's always going to be behind closed doors things, but, you know, maybe the more people that come out and write books about their, their horrible childhoods or, you know, their horrible marriages and things like that, um, I say it's, it's better. No. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I remember the, the the first time that we we spoke on the show. Like your book, uh, your book wasn't out yet, but you know, I was, you know, I had seen so much uh, feedback, and people were just chomping at the bit, wanting to, you know, to get to get their hands on your book, and they were wondering, you know, they were asking when is it coming out, and where can I get it, and you know, like, and people were, you know, when the book was out on pre order, you know, people were just like literally you know, running to, running to their computers to, you know, to, to pre-order it because, you know, like, you know, I think, go ahead. I think a lot of people of wrestling fans thought that I was going to write these stories about Bret Hart walking around in the kitchen like Elvis did eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Like what's, you know, what does he really do? What's he, you know? Yeah. Like I think that's what people thought I was going to write about. Like those little inside things. Right. You know, like, you know, Brett really does burp. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what people expected. And I suppose because there are so many books like that. Yeah, there are. That are out like that. Like, you know, uh, perhaps that's what happened. Uh, That just threw me did we lose Bronwyn? Uh, I don't no, know. Here. Oh, you're here? Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, so My daughter was opening and closing the door. 
Oh, no, someone must have signed in then. Weird. Um, you could probably edit that. Hey, Richard? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I think, you know, I think for the most part, though, those are like the small majority of fans. Like I said, like if you want to call them Marks or if you want to call them, you know, rabid fans or whatnot. But I think, you know, I think from what I've seen and from what, you know, the comments I've seen people, you know, wanting to get your book, I think for the the, the large part, I think wrestling fans just wanted to read your perspective on your own life and about, you know, your life in professional, you know, in professional wrestling. You know, you weren't directly, you weren't in the business directly, but you were in the business, you know, if that makes sense. So you weren't in the business directly, but you were still in it, obviously. So. Yes, yes. You know, I was behind the scenes. Exactly, yeah. So. Uh, like, I knew exactly what was going on all the time, you know, without, uh, with being involved in it. But, uh, so it's been an interesting journey. I hope that, uh, you know, the more people approach me about it, and even wrestling fans. Now, you know, there are wrestling fans that have sent me emails and are like, wow, like I had no idea, you know. <clears throat> You know, who was this woman? Because, you know, I, when I was married to Brad, I wasn't really, other than the wrestling with shadows, I wasn't a very public person. No. No, you, I mean. Not, not at all. I didn't do interviews. I didn't take pictures and the whole thing. So I think I was sort of like a mysterious kind of, who is she? Where is she from? What does she do? Right. Kind of, you know. So then I, out comes this book about my, wow, <laughs> that's who Julie is. And I think the emails I'm getting, they're like, I had no idea. You know, like, wow, of course you're a strong woman. You know, and uh, so that's really who I was. I was this uh, pillar. For not only my younger days, pillar for my family, my sister, my brother, friends and family over the years, but I also was a pillar for Brett, you know, in more ways than one. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? yeah for sure. And I got to take kudos for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yeah. yeah, that's for sure. I mean, like. You know, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, I know for a fact that, you know, your book is going to do, you know, it's going to do quite well. And, uh, you know, I, I had asked you last week how the book was doing and I'm, I'm sure it's doing, you know, quite well. Um, it is. Yes. And I think, it, you know, because it just got out there, we just kicked it off. So, you know, it's like, I guess. I, it's funny because the majority of people contacting and writing to me are Americans, which is weird. It's mm. almost like they got the book first, <laughs> and then Canada gets it. Isn't that so typical of Canada? Yeah, we always. I, yeah, the Canadians get the shaft, no matter you know America's number know. one, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm 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 sure this book is going to do even even better. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, uh, I'm definitely going to read the book and, uh, I'm looking forward to reading it cause I'm sure it's going to be a, it's going to be a, you know, a fantastic read. And, um, so if I could, uh, if I could switch gears, uh, yep. getting back to, getting back to Bronwyn. Now you would mention in the, in the DVD that, um, that, um, it would be nice if maybe the, you know, the, the WWE would, uh, maybe take them on as, you know, as maybe as part of the uh, developmental team, like for NXT, maybe like, do you, th do you think if, you know, do you think if Vince, like if Vince called your father tomorrow and said, we'd like to bring you on as part of our develop developmental team, or maybe as part of, you know, as some other uh, type of job, like, do you think your father would, uh, would be open to that? Um, it's really hard to say because I think he has so much to contribute, but, um, he's just a very private man and, 
as you can see on the DVD, he's very sort of closed off into himself. But um, maybe if they somehow could work thing out, that would work for him. Maybe behind the scenes, he's behind the scenes or something like that, you know. So he could still have his privacy, but help out the new talent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, I think I think it would be a tremendous asset to uh, the roster of NXT, you know, in their developmental system because he's, I mean, you know, and like I said, even Brett said this, that, you know, Dynamite is the greatest technical wrestler in the last 30, 40, even 50 years. I think he would, he would, you know, he would be great, you know, teaching, you know, teaching, uh, you know, the younger, you know, the young, uh, the new generation of, of pro wrestlers, like how to work and how to tell a story in the ring. Like I, I, you know, I would love to see that. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. Yeah. For oh, sure. me too. I'd be sitting front row. <laughs> yeah, no, I would be too. You know, like, absolutely. Well, so. You're like, oh my God, Tom trained that guy. Oh, can't you tell? Yeah. Yeah. So, I would imagine, like, um, you had commented, like, uh, in in our first interview that, you know, you were obviously nervous, like, meeting your father. So, what, like, maybe get more into detail, like, when you actually went over to see him, like, what what was he, you know, what was he like? Like, um, was he standoffish? Was he, you know, you know, you know, what was it like? The first first time I well, he, <laughs> I was in tears, of course, and mm-hmm. I just sat down and he was just smiling at, at me and asked what was wrong, <laughs> like as if nothing, like no time had passed. Right. And um, I just said, I missed you. And I, I hugged him and was just crying. And he was just so happy to see me that, you know, at, at that time, he didn't have tears. He wasn't upset at the time. He was just so thrilled. And um, he's a lot sweeter than people think. Especially when it comes to his little girl, so. Yeah, that's, that's, um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, I guess that's a, that's a common, uh, common misnomer about Dynamite because you hear the, the stories and, and, uh, Brett was actually on, uh, Stone Cold, uh, Steve Austin's podcast a few weeks ago and he had commented that, that Tom is like, he's like a little pit bull. And uh, you know, if you're on if you're if you're on Tom's good side, he's like the friendly friendliest little pit bull, pit bull you've ever known. But if you cross him, you know he's he's just a you know just a, a you know a wild rabid pit bull that you don't want to mess with. But um, and other people in the business have commented that you know Tom's not not a guy that you want to mess with. That he's got a real mean streak. That um, you know apparently Tom was a real big practical joker. You know in the locker room. And uh, he had no he had no qualms about you know standing up to anybody whether they were whether it was Andre the Giant or whether it was you know a guy that was the same size as him. So yeah, that's true. He could be you know he's got his sweet side, and of course he's very tough as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, we had a question from uh, somebody on the Facebook page. If um, kind of shifting shifting gears here, if you guys have any stories about, uh, about Stu, you know, growing up in the heart, you know, uh, you know, being, being in the heart house. I have, um, one really fond memory of growing up. And I think all the granddaughters probably can recall this. Um, if you'd go up to Stu Hart's house for Sunday dinner and you'd have your hair in a ponytail, he'd always be sure to pull it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember him saying, so yeah. I never want to wear a ponytail when I'd go for Sunday dinners. Oh my God. I can imagine though. <laughs> Uh, you know, I can imagine a guy the, the the size of Stu with his, you know, massive hands. He probably, you know, he probably were like, you know, pull your head right off your shoulders. Absolutely, and I was probably only five years old. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember Braun? He had that little black comb. He pull it out of his pocket and he'd try to comb your hair too. Yeah. Tug, tug on a knot. <laughs> yeah. Stick his tongue out to the side. Uh. <laughs> Stu. <laughs> Leave her hair alone, darling. Yeah, not too sure what that was about, but <laughs> yeah. Huh. Uh-huh. But um, stew for me. Wow. Woo. Taught me how to cook. Really? Oh yeah. Huh. Oh, and my uh, aunt Julie's an amazing cook. Because of stew heart. Oh, didn't know that. 
yeah, Braun, all I could make was craft dinner and I could barely make that when I first moved here. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> actually, yeah, yeah, actually, Brett, uh, Brett had commented in his book that Stu was always, always in the kitchen cooking. He was always cooking something. Uh, the meat. Stu is like the prime rib and the, you know, two or three giant turkeys and cut slice them and all by hand. But, uh, yeah, Stu in the cooking. If it wasn't for him, well, I wouldn't be where I am today. He's cooking. Hmm. Swapping recipes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, call him up, how do I make this? You know, and he'd tell you how to do it step by step. You know? All right, well, that's going to do it uh, for this edition of Kayfabe Kick and Audio for June 25th, 2013. I want to thank, you know, I want to thank uh, both of you for coming on the show. You know, it's uh, uh, extremely appreciated. And uh, so this is the part where you guys give your plugs and give your shout-outs to whoever you want. So, Oh, well, I'd like to shout-out to my uh, niece, Bronwyn, for doing the job that she's doing and how proud I am of her and uh, carrying on the family name. And I see a lot of it in honor of her dad. Um you know, something to be very proud of. And uh, her fiancé, Dan, Dynamite Dan, being an awesome guy, awesome worker. You know, um, I really want to see both of them go to the top, you know. And as well, my niece, Amaris, and her boyfriend, Cam, um, another great worker. Oh, um, like, it's kind of funny seeing this generation moving forward. Uh, in the wrestling business, because who would have thought, you know? Um, I think Michelle and I thought that that would be it. And when these kids were going to grow up and be teachers or doctors or something, but not involved in wrestling. So it's really cool to watch this all unfold, you know? And, uh, yeah, so I love them. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, babe. Okay, so you can follow me on Twitter. It's DynamiteDoll84. And for all the Calgary Wrestling fans, um, we have a show actually this weekend, June 29th, Canadian Oil Pro is putting on at the Downtown Legion. And it's called Saddle Up. So it'll be me, uh, the Dynamite Doll, and my fiancé, Dynamite Dan, and my brother-in-law, Kamikaze. Also, RCW. We have a show in Calgary... July 20th, and that'll be at uh, the Forest Lawn Legion. All right, excellent. And uh, Julie, I know I mentioned this at the top of the show, but to recap, uh, where can where, where can people uh, buy your book? Uh, at tightropebooks.com. Um, they can follow me at Heart Faith. Um, you can also follow press releases, announcements, signings on my website, juliehart.org. And, um, yeah, that's about it. All right, excellent. And, as always, uh, you can uh, check out Kayfabe Kickout, the official uh, website of Kayfabe Kickout. That's uh, kayfabekickout.com. We always have the latest wrestling news, interviews, uh, lots of free audio episodes. Uh, you can check us out on Twitter at uh, kayfabe underscore kickout. We're on Google Plus. Just go to the Google search uh, engine and type up Kayfabe Kickout Google Plus. Uh, check out the official Facebook page, facebook.com slash Kayfabe Kickout. Uh, so that is going to do it uh, for this edition of Kayfabe Kickout Audio. Again, I want to thank uh, you both for being on the show. And um, yeah, thanks again. Thanks so much for having us. No yeah. problem. I will be back. Fun. I will be back, wrestling fans, with a new episode. So tune in. <laughs>